Chapter 8, Section 4, Making Molecules, Mass-to-Mass -mass Conversions. Now, on Tuesday, we talked, about, um, we talked about pancakes, and we talked about relationships uh, between moles of reactants and moles of product. And that's what the chemical reaction, the chemical equation, gives us that information. How many moles of this would make how many moles of that? But what's more practical is to know, well, if I start out with five grams of this substance, how many grams of the product am I going to get? Right? Because we don't measure things in moles. We measure things in grams or kilograms. And so this is, this is the big idea for this process called stoichiometry. If we have a mass of compound A, we can figure out the number of moles. We do that using the molar mass. We've learned how to do that. You add up the atomic masses from the periodic table, and you figure out how much in grams does one mole of that substance weigh. That is a conversion factor that allows us to convert from grams of that to moles. The middle part here, moles to moles, is what we learned on Tuesday. We look at the balanced chemical equation, and we can figure out how many moles of A to how many moles of B. And then to get from moles of B to the mass of B, again, we use the, the molar mass using the periodic table. So this is the big idea. And, and basically, there's this little chant. Um, I don't say mass. I say grams. Grams to moles to moles to grams. And that is the path for most of the stoichiometry problems we're going to do. Grams to moles to moles to grams. And you know that you've been saying it to yourself enough when you wake up in the middle of the night muttering, grams to moles to moles to grams. Oh, oh, what, what was I dreaming about, right? So grams to moles to moles to grams. So let's look at this. Here is a balanced chemical equation for the combustion of octane. Um, if you have pure octane, uh, well, your car might run really well or it might not. But it would, it would consume oxygen, so two moles of octane would require 24, 25, can't even read today, 25 moles of oxygen, and it would produce 16 moles of carbon dioxide and 18 moles of water. And so the question that's being asked here is what mass of carbon dioxide is emitted by an automobile per 5 times 10 to the 2 grams of pure octane used? Well, real gasoline is a mixture of lots of different compounds. And so that makes it really difficult to calculate. But we can say, well, what if it was pure octane? How much carbon dioxide would be emitted? OK, so <coughs> what we've got here is a stoichiometry problem. And the idea here is that we've got grams to moles to moles to grams. When we first start doing these problems, we need to write lots of stuff down so that we remember where we're going and we don't get lost. After you get the hang of it, you don't have to write so much stuff down. But at the beginning, just write everything down. So this is where we're starting. And this is dimensional analysis again. We are starting with this number. This problem is only giving us one number that's got to be the number that we start with, right? So that's 5.0 times 10 to the 2 grams of what? Octane. Well, let's not write the word. Let's write the formula. I tried to leave some room in here. C8H18. That's where we're starting. And what is it asking us to find? Mass of carbon dioxide. OK, so over here, way at this end, we want grams of CO2. So we've identified what, what we're starting with and what we're trying to figure out. The path now is grams of octane to moles of octane. So the C8H18. 
And we can do that conversion by figuring out what the molar mass of this is. And then we're going to go from moles of our first substance to moles of what we're trying to find, moles of CO2. And that's actually the easiest conversion. We just look at the balanced chemical equation. For every two moles of octane, we're going to get 16 moles of carbon dioxide. And then we can convert moles of octane to, I'm sorry, CO2 to grams using the molar mass. So there's a bunch of pieces that we're going to put together now. So what we're doing today, we're not learning really anything new. We're just putting together all the pieces in the puzzle. So this um, path here has three arrows. So we're going to have three conversion factors. So I'm going to start here writing the equation 5 times 10 to the 2 grams of octane. In these sorts of calculations, it's very important to say grams of what? Because you're starting with grams of one thing, you're going to grams of another thing. If you don't write it down, um, it's really easy to get things uh, twisted and come up with the wrong answer. So there's one, two, three. And the same path we did before, we're going to chant like Dora, reading her map, grams of octane, moles of octane, moles of CO2, grams of CO2. And those are the units that go on the tops of all these fractions. Grams of octane. Next is moles of octane. Then moles of CO2. And finally, grams of CO2. Everybody with me? What do we put in the denominator? The, the unit from the previous term, because we want all of, all of these units except one to cancel out. So down here, we're going to put this unit. So we put grams of C8H18. And some of these chemical formulas are long and tedious. Just get over it. Taking the class over again because you didn't pass is long and tedious as well. And then check your units. Make sure everything is really canceling out. So there's grams of that and grams of this. Moles of this and moles of this. Moles and moles. And we're left with the unit we're trying to find out. Dimensional analysis says you analyze the units. You get all the units in place. The units then <coughs> tell you where to put the numbers. OK, I believe that it's, if you can start with something easy, why not? You don't have to fill these in in order. The one in the middle is the easy one. Let's do that one and, and get it out of the way. Moles of CO2, moles of octane. The numbers that go in front here are just these numbers in the balanced chemical equation. It is just that easy. The 2 is in front of C8H18. So down here, I write 2 in front of C8H18. In the, in the equation, 16 CO2. So I'm going to write 16 CO2 in there. You could reduce it, but why? Yeah, you could reduce it to 8 over 1. But what if you screwed up doing that? Right? Then it's not really a shortcut. So I just write the numbers down. We'll let the calculator figure it out. The first term and the last term are molar masses. They're not given to us because we have a periodic table. We can figure them out. So I recommend not doing these in your head. I recommend writing it down. Because with all these steps, there's a fairly good chance that the first time you do it, you're not going to come up with the correct answer. And you're going to have to figure out what went wrong. If everything's written down, you can go back and see what you did and find your mistake. If you don't write stuff down, then you just have to start over and hope it turns out better this time. It's not a good strategy. So we need the molar mass of C8H18. So that's 8 carbons, so 8 times the mass of carbon, plus eight, uh, yeah, 18. 18 times the mass of hydrogen. I forgot to pull up my calculator. 
There we go. Um, 8 times 12.01 plus 18 times 1.008. Um, 114.2. Anybody else get that number? Okay, good. Run it through in your calculator twice if you're doing it by yourself. I'm, I'm figuring I did it once and at least one of you got the same, so we're, we're good. What are the units on that? That's the mass in grams of one mole of that substance, right? So 114.2 grams is the mass of one mole. So then when I'm looking to put this in, the number is going to go with grams. 114.2. Now some people are bothered when there's no number up here. See, I'm a chemist, I don't like to write the number one, so I just, I don't write it. But I'm gonna write the number one for you. Okay, as my gift to you today, look, I wrote the number one. Does it have to be there? No, because when you multiply by one, it doesn't change anything. But if you like it there, go ahead, it's not gonna hurt anything. Over here, we need the molar mass of CO2. So, that's one carbon times the mass of a mole of carbon and two oxygens and that is 44.01 grams is equal to one mole of CO2. Anybody else get that number? Sadly, I, I just remember the mass of CO2. I've done it too many times. So 44.01 over 1 mole. Now we use the calculator and just be organized about this. Go from left to right. So I'm going to start 5.0 EE2. Some of you are still having a little issue with your EE button. Times 1 divided by 114.2, times 16, divided by 2, times 44.01, divided by 1. And I came up with 1,541. 15... 41.5 grams of CO2. These calculations do tend to get pretty wide. Sometimes when I'm working these things out, I'll actually turn my paper landscape, and you've got more space. <coughs> if, you write, if you write big, you might want to do that. What about significant figures? Just two. The first number has two. That decimal point is kind of small. Make it bigger. The first number, the mass that we started with, has two decimal plate. I mean, two significant figures. The mole to mole ratio is exact. Molar masses are not exact, and you shouldn't round them off. You know, you don't want to round this to one fourteen and round that to 44. In this example, it wouldn't make much of a difference, but some elements like chlorine is 35.45. That's almost 35 and a half. If you round that to 35, that can cause a problem in your, in your results. So I did round these. Well, this one, this one came out just like that. Um, you want to keep at least four sig figs in your molar masses. Because any periodic table that you look at that's decent is going to have at least four sig figs. Question? Well, what can you use this where the two moles This one? Okay, that came from this number two right here. So for every two moles of octane, we get 16 moles of CO2. 
So if if we have two moles of C8, if we have moles of C8H18 down here, it's two of those for every 16 of those. So everything on the top is going to be Well, we put the units in following this pattern, grams to moles to moles to grams. And then we set up all the units so they would cancel out, and then we look for numbers. Yeah, I got that. I just, I was confused on the units. Okay. And so this, the one in the middle is always going to be moles to moles, and it's going to come from the balanced chemical equation. Occasionally, it'll be one to one, and you might be tempted to leave it out, but don't. So these are usually going to have at least four sig figs, four sig figs. This one will be exact in the middle. Usually what happens, and this is, you know, for those of you that really hate sig figs, Usually what you can do with these calculations is just look at how many sig figs did you start with and just end with the same. Now, should I round this off to 15? Please say no. No, because 1,541 is a little different than 15. If I put that into dollars, right, somebody wants $1,541.50 to do some landscaping in my yard. Well, let's just round that off to $15. Here you go. Is the landscape guy going to be happy? No, because we changed the value, right? We changed it too much. Now, if we rounded it off to $1,500, might he go along with that? He might. He's out 41 bucks, but out of $1,500, eh, not such a big deal. So when we take this number to round it, you have to be careful. And this is something that beginning chemistry students have a lot of trouble with. So we're going to keep two sig figs. Ask yourself, what place is that? This is the ones place and the tens place. This is the hundreds place, right? If you're rounding off anything larger than the ones place, Put it in scientific notation first, and then round it off. <coughs> because otherwise, at least sometimes, you're going to shortchange that landscape guy and give him 15 bucks instead of $1,500. So in scientific notation, this would be 1.5415 times what? Times 10 to the third. This is all very small over here. We move the decimal place. One, two, three. So this is a plus three. Can't point there. Now, when I round it off, I don't have to worry about it. This is 1.5 times 10 to the third grams of CO2. And we just did our first mass mass stoichiometry problem. Any questions? Stoichiometry is a big deal in chemistry. This is important. <coughs> Let's do a related problem. <coughs> what mass of octane would be needed to generate 42.3 grams of water? Well, I'm going to show you something that I like to do for stoichiometry, I like to use this balanced chemical equation to organize the information. So we, I read the problem, now let's read through again. What mass of octane? Well, even if we didn't remember that this was the octane, hopefully by process of elimination we could figure out that's not octane, this isn't octane, and that isn't octane. So it's that first one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write question mark grams under that, because that's what it's asking me. What mass of octane? Usually in chemistry we use grams for our mass unit. You could calculate it in kilograms or pounds or metric tons or something, but that would be more difficult. If it doesn't say it wants a particular unit, choose the easiest unit. And then they're giving us this number, 42.3 grams of water. So I'm going to find water in the equation and write that number underneath it, 42.3 grams. 
So this has now removed most of the words from the problem, and it's the words that cause so much trouble. This is where I'm starting, and this is where I'm going to end up. And what do we chant? Grams to moles to moles to grams. Right? So let's write that out. Grams to moles to moles to grams. Grams of what are we starting with? It's the one that we have a number for. So grams of water. And we know how many grams, 42.3 grams. And we're going to convert that to moles of what? I didn't leave enough space here. When, when we do a, a conversion, we can change the unit, right? So here we're, we're going from grams of water, we can convert to moles of water using the molar mass. I can't convert from grams of water directly to moles of octane or grams of octane because I don't know what the relationship is. Could I figure it out? Yeah, but it would be harder than just doing this problem the regular way. Moles of water, and then I'm going to convert to moles of the other thing, the octane. And then I'm going to go to grams. <coughs> so let's, let's try to get big picture here. This, I'm going to call this one A, and I'm going to call this one B, because we're going from point A to point B. Sometimes all those little letters and numbers get confusing. So what we're doing is we're starting out with a mass of A. We're converting to moles of the same compound. Then we're converting to moles of the other compound. And then to grams of that other compound. I'm changing one thing at a time. Grams of A to moles of A. It's still about whatever compound A is. I'm just changing the unit from grams to moles. In the middle, I'm going from moles of A to moles of B. Now I'm changing the compound, but I'm keeping the unit the same. You can't change two things at once. And then the last one, I'm going from moles to grams. The unit changes, but the substance stays the same. <coughs> It's very important that you be able to step back and see the big picture that's going on. Otherwise, you will definitely get lost in the details, and they're not going to make any sense. If you have the big picture in mind, then you won't get lost as much. Any questions? OK, so now that we laid out our path, we can set out our equation. So again, we're going to put units in first. So 42.3 grams of water times, times, times. I look at my path that I wrote out, grams of water to moles of water to moles of octane to grams of octane. And I just copy those units down in the numerator. Getting this path, that is the key part. That's the trickiest part. Once you get that, it's a matter of just following a pattern. So this is going to be moles of water and moles of octane and grams of octane. These units go on the tops of all my terms. The bottom is going to be the previous unit. I have grams of water. I want to divide by that because I want that unit to cancel out and go away. Grams of H2O because I want those units to cancel out. 
And then here I've got moles of H2O. So I want those to cancel out. And then over here, moles of C8H18. I want them to cancel out. Okay? Dimensional analysis. Now we put numbers in. Where do we find numbers for the middle term? In the chemical equation. In front of C8H18 is the number 2. So in this fraction here, this conversion factor, in front of C8H18, I'm going to put the number 2. What should I put in front of H2O? 18. 18 H2O. Because this says for every 2 moles of this, I get 18 moles of that. That's the relationship between the quantities in terms of numbers of particles. This second term and the last term are going to be molar masses. Any of you taking notes? We calculated the molar mass of C at H18. 114.2. So we don't have to calculate it again. So we got that one, and now we need water. Now I know what it is, but I'm going to calculate it for you anyway. So there's two hydrogens. Each hydrogen is 1.008 from the periodic table. There's one oxygen, and that comes out to 18.02. Grams of water is equal to one mole of water. So then in this term here, one mole of water weighs 18.02 grams. So now we just go through on the calculator, starting at the left, 42.3 times 1, if you like, divided by 18.02 times 2 divided by 18 times 114.2 and if you want to divide by 1 go right ahead and I'm running out of space again let's let's just think ahead how many sig figs should this have three. should have 3 <coughs> so 29.786 but I want three sig figs. So this seven would round up to an eight because the next digit that we're dropping is five or larger. So this is closer to 29.8 than it is to 29.7. So 29.8 grams of octane. Any questions? I often get comments from students that it all made sense during lecture, it looked easy, and then you went home and you tried to do it and you got lost. And, and that's really common because, I mean, think about, think about pole vaulting. How many of you have ever tried to pole vault? Yeah, a couple. I tried, a, you know, one day in junior high, I tried. You, you watch them and you, you see what they're doing, right? They're running. They're sticking the end of the pole into that little notch, and then they're bending into it and letting it pull them up and over the bar. OK, I see what you're doing. Can you just go do it? No, it's hard. You have to teach your muscles how to do it, right? Stoichiometry, most of the stuff in chemistry, you watch me do it. I explain the process, but then you have to practice, OK? You have to practice. Now, could you pole vault if you hadn't learned how to run yet? Mm -mm. Can you do stoichiometry if you haven't learned how to calculate a molar mass? No. So there's steps that you have to take before you can put it all together. Any questions? <coughs> Another example. Get away from the octane. Magnesium hydroxide, the active ingredient in milk of magnesia, neutralizes stomach acid, primarily HCl, according to the reaction. There it is. 
How much HCl in grams can be neutralized by 5.5 grams of magnesium hydroxide? Now, all of those words at the top, all of this stuff, do we need any of those? Not really, no. What we need is the balanced chemical equation. We need what they're asking, how much HCl in grams, and we need what we're starting with. So we're going to take this and uh, use the equation, which I need to revise these slides and leave them a little more space. So the question is, how many grams of that can be neutralized by 5.50 grams of the magnesium hydroxide? So we're starting with 5.50 grams of magnesium hydroxide, and we're going to convert that to what? We're going grams to moles. So we're going to convert it to moles of magnesium hydroxide, and then what? Grams to moles to moles of HCl, and then grams of HCl. Grams to moles to moles to grams. Grams of the first thing, the thing they gave you the number for, to moles of that same first thing, to moles of what they're asking you about, to grams of what they're asking you about. That's the hard part, getting the path. Path now tells us what to do. Because where do we, who do we ask when we don't know which way to go? Dora. The map. And the map comes in and says, well, first, you have to convert grams of magnesium hydroxide to moles of magnesium hydroxide, and then to moles of HCl, and then to grams of HCl. Wouldn't it be great if you could just say, hey, map, and he'd come out and tell you this stuff? That'd be awesome. It's not going to happen. Okay, 5.50 grams, magnesium hydroxide. We did all of the thinking now. Now we're just following what we decided to do. I'm writing these terms down in the same order. So I've got the same units in there, and then I go in and fill in the bottom. Those units are grams of magnesium hydroxide, it's going to cancel out. And yeah, it's tedious writing magnesium hydroxide over and over again. That cancels out, and moles of HCl down here, and that cancels. Which term is the easiest to fill in numbers for? The middle one. So what should I put on the top two. two? And what should I put on the bottom? One. There's no number in front of this, because chemists don't like to write the number one. But we understand that that means that there's one. So now we need the molar mass for magnesium hydroxide we need the molar mass for HCl. Which one's going to be easier? The HCl. Let's do that one first. I'm going to do this at the top because I ran out of space at the bottom. So um, HCl, there's one hydrogen and one chlorine. And so we end up with uh, 36 .46. That's grams of HCl is equal to one mole of HCl. So now I know one mole is 36.46 grams of HCl. <coughs> and then I have to calculate for magnesium hydroxide. Sometimes I forget magnesium. 24.31. So there's one magnesium, 24.31. How many oxygens? <coughs> Two. 
because this is one of those multi-packs. There's two of the OH groups. That means two hydrogens and two oxygens. So two times the mass of oxygen plus two times the mass of hydrogen. So sometimes what happens is you misread the chemical formula and you do this calculation incorrectly and then you know you're maybe you're doing mastering chemistry and it says nope that's the wrong answer. And then you're like, what? And so then you're texting me, why am I getting the wrong answer? And I'll say, send me a picture of your work. And if you send me a picture and you've got a you don't have a two there, I'll say, oh well, check your molar mass. I think you misread the formula. And we can see what happened without redoing the whole thing. Okay, um, let's see. 24.31 plus uh, 58.33. Anybody? 58.33. That's grams of magnesium hydroxide equal to one mole. So then that <coughs> one mole, 58.33 grams. I have all my numbers in place. I'm ready to rock and roll. 5.5 .5 divided by 58.33 times 2 times 36.46. And my calculator gives me this mess. And you're like, okay, well, that's just crazy too many digits. This number had three sig figs. And so we're going to round this off to three sig figs. This is the um, hundredths place. If it was off here in the tens, hundreds, thousands, we'd have to be real careful. But here we don't have to be so careful. We just look at the next digit. It's five or greater, so we're going to round this up. I'm going to call this 6.88 grams of HCl. Any questions? A good way to start on this before you dive into mastering chemistry and lose points because you're confused or something is to go home. <coughs> the, um, the PowerPoint slides are on OneDrive. And look at the slide without looking at your notes and try to do it yourself. And then if you can't come up with the right answer, go on to YouTube and watch this video again. And you can pause it, oh, that's what I was missing, and, and work through it that way. Do a couple examples like that until you feel like you have a better handle on what's going on. And then go off and try to do a brand new one. Gosh, how many examples are there? Do you want another example, or are you okay? Another one? Okay, we'll do this one then. So one component of acid rain is sulfuric acid, which forms sulfur dioxide, SO2, a pollutant. Um, it forms when SO2 reacts with oxygen and rainwater, according to this reaction. Assuming there's more than enough oxygen and water, how much sulfuric acid in kilograms forms from 2.6 times 10 to the third kilograms of SO2. <coughs> Do we need all of these words at the beginning? No, we don't. And um, I, I need more space, and so I'm going to get rid of them. I'm just going to color right over them. We don't need that word example. I don't need any of that. Now I have space to write up at the top. Okay, so what information are they giving me? What number? 2.6 times 10 to the third kilograms of SO2. So I'm going to write that in here. 2.6 times 10 to the third kilograms. And what are they asking me to find? 
how much H2SO4, and they're specifying kilograms, making it trickier. Okay, so let's just go with our pattern here. 2.6 times 10 to the third <coughs> kilograms of SO2. <coughs> let's just ignore that pesky little K on the kilogram for now. It's just a variant of grams. Grams to moles to moles to grams. Next we go to moles. Moles of what? SO2. And then we go to moles again, but of something else, right? Moles of what? Uh, H2. H2SO4, the question mark one. And then we're going to go to kilograms of H2SO4. With the kilograms thrown in here, there's, there's different ways to deal with it. You can take the kilograms and convert them to grams, um, and then go moles to moles to grams, and then convert the grams back to kilograms. What's going to happen is the kilogram to gram conversion is going to cancel itself out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ignore the K for now, and I'll, I'll show you how it all works out. So 2.6 times 10 to the third. I'm going to, does that show up as a different color? Yeah. So kilograms of SO2. And so we have a fraction for moles of SO2, and we have a fraction for moles of H2SO4, and we have a fraction for kilograms of H2SO4. So I've got the K's in there, but I made them purple. And so we're going to ignore them until the end and see what happens with them. <coughs> so grams of SO2, moles of SO2, H, yeah, moles of SO2. Moles of H2SO4. So, middle term, what number goes on the top? Two. And what number goes on the bottom? Two. Two moles of sulfuric acid for every two moles of SO2. Molar mass of SO2. Oh, I'm going to calculate that. One sulfur <coughs> and two oxygens. <coughs> So it's 64.07 grams of SO2 equals one mole. So molar mass, one over 64.07. <coughs> and then H2SO4, two hydrogens. and one sulfur, and four oxygens. I can't do that one in my head. <coughs> Two times 1.008 plus, oops, that's not what I wanted to do, plus 32.07 plus four times 16, uh, 98.09. Grams of H2SO4 is equal to one mole.
So, yeah, lost my train of thought. Left the station without me. There we go. <coughs> Question? Thirty-two point oh six. Um, it depends on what periodic table you look at. This one's thirty-two point oh seven. Yeah. Periodic tables do differ slightly in those numbers. Some of them are more rounded or less rounded, and then um, some of the molar masses have been updated. And so, if you've got an old periodic table, it might be different. Usually it's the last digit, though, where it's different, and so it doesn't end up affecting your ultimate answer. Okay, let's look at these units now. Um, so I put the Ks in purple. Kilogram of SO2 is not going to cancel grams of SO2. But if I leave the kilogram there, if I leave the kilo there, the gram of SO2 will cancel the gram of SO2. So I'm, I'm canceling that out and this out, but the K stays. Then those cancel and these cancel. And so in this, in this unit over here, this wasn't really here, was it? because it's not 98.09 kilograms, it's 98.09 grams. So we really can't keep that guy in there. This is probably more confusing than it is helpful. So I'm gonna erase him. Because one mole weighs 98.09 grams. This gram didn't cancel out with anything. We wanted to end up with kilograms, but where's the K? The K didn't get canceled. It's, it's still in there. So in this problem, we actually don't have to convert from kilograms to grams, and then back again. Some of you will say, oh, that's really neat. And others of you will say, uh, I, what are you doing? That's voodoo, right? Okay, so if you don't think it's really cool, just put two more steps in, convert the kilograms to grams, and then do this part in the middle, and then convert the grams back to kilograms, and you'll get to the same place. It's just you took two extra steps. <coughs> so um, 2.6... EE3 divided by 64.07 times 2 divided by 2 times 98.09. And I'm getting a big number. Um, 3980.55 blah blah blah. I should have two sig figs, right? Does the starting number had two? Is that going to be 40? No. Let's put it, let's put it in scientific notation first. <coughs> so moving the decimal point one, two, three places. So this is times 10 to the third. So the next digit over, oh, it's really tiny, isn't it, is an 8. The 8 means I round the 9 up to a 10. So it becomes 4. But we're not just going to write 4. We have two significant figures. We need that 0. 4.0 times 10 to the third kilograms H2SO4. I'm just really... Not on my game today. 4.0 times 10 to the third kilograms <coughs> H2SO4. <coughs> Any questions? <coughs> 